So, thanks for joining in. This is the men's room. I'm Onimisi Adaba. How have you been? You know I always ask that because I care. Even if you're not feeling too good. I mean, it's, it's normal, it's okay, but um, you get over it, yeah? So, as I said, this is the men's room and um, I really don't have a topic, honestly. I've been thinking of what to say, how to tag this. Um, but I have my guest in the house and we're just gonna go have a conversation, have a flow. You know, and um, you figure it out as we move along, as we glide along, as we chat along. Now, she's a journalist, she's a news anchor, she's a writer, see her on TV every day, and um, she teaches and she trains as well. She's a mother, she's a wife, she combines all of these and has a wonderful way of doing it. And we're just going to be chit chatting on. Okay, here it is. I, I saw this, I got this message on. Um, you know, all of the messages that people send to people on WhatsApp, on BB, text, and all of that. So I got this and I'm like, wow, this would make a good topic. I threw it out to her and um, she gave me back a whole lot. And I'm like, okay, you know what? Come over to the studio and let's have a chat in the men's room. And here she is. I'll let you in on who she is right after the break. Back, if you're just hooking up the men's room, you're right on time to catch up on whatever it is we have to talk about. Um, yes, my name is Onimisi Adaba, and okay, I'll let you in on who she is. Yes. All right, like I said, <laughs> like I said, she's a journalist, my goodness, Anko. And um, she's a writer, she's a teacher, a trainer, a wife, and a mother. I'm reading out all of these things because she blends it, and I mean, she blends it perfectly well, and she'll be letting us in on all of that in a short while. Okay, she's Ichoma Onyato. And she's here in the men's room for the first time. Good to have you here, Ooh, Thanks a lot, OJ, if I can call you that one here. Well, yeah, OJ is fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, orange juice. Um, juice is <laughs> oh, you know what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> so, first time in the men's room. Uh, yeah. Good to have you here. Yeah. I look forward to having you and your husband here sometime. True, so true. you would share with us um, one or two things that um, you've always talked about behind the scenes and all of that. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Okay, good, nice, sweet, good. So um, we're going to be talking about that thing we um, that thing I sent to you. What we shared. Which one? Um, let's see now. I've sent so many things, right? <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> what topic? It, it's amazing, but okay. Let's keep it by the side. But okay. um, let's talk on some other things and build up to it. Um, you've been in the spotlight for a long time. And, um, Tell me about it. Yeah. How has it been? I'm asking because. I had this colleague, friend and colleague, similar to you, and um, she was in TV, she was reading news and doing very well, and all of a sudden she stops, and I'm like, what happened? She says her husband doesn't want her in the spotlight, her husband, you know, she's Well, that's something, that's something we get, we get that a lot, you know, when people come into the industry, mm. um, you know, Yes, it's men's room, so we're, we are going to talk about men's issues, oh, yeah. and, and, and mainly men's issues. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you meet them, or they meet you, and they meet you on TV. They mm -hmm. see you, you're there, and all that. And then, after a while, they feel everybody else can see you as well. And you're yeah. thinking, of course they can, I'm on telly, mm -hmm. you know. So, it's a difficult balance to, um, you do need to find that man who's actually secure with himself, so that he doesn't feel every other person is trying to get at you also mm. Um, mm. you have to set boundaries for yourself especially for the females definitely yeah. definitely i mean it's not it's not easy to find such a person mm. but um I'd, I'd say to anybody coming into the industry who's engaged or who's hoping to be married um and they're coming into the industry to have that discussion of what the boundaries are um we do work very late at night we do come home extremely late at night oh. So um, it, you'd find that a traditional man who'd want his meals served at about yeah. seven, mm. eight, mm. you're not there to do that. Um, so you have to find someone else who's going to sort that out. A lot of people go, oh, how does he cope and all that. But you, you do have to have those conversations. Um, but how does your husband cope? I mean, how has he coped over the years? You know, with you in the spotlight, you work late shifts. Very you know, So obviously, you're there in the office when you're meant to be home with the family exactly. and you're back home when they're probably in bed, you know. I think the biggest thing is trust mm -hmm. because you could not, you, you probably be working on a regular nine to five um, and then 
but you don't trust each other anyway. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't say it's the time of day. I'd say it's the state of the relationship that matters. Okay. What is the state of your relationship in trust wise? Mm -hmm. He knows that when you're there, you are actually at work and you're not winking at somebody else or maybe going off somewhere, you know. So I wouldn't say um, the time of day is the issue. It's the state of the relationship you have on ground mm -hmm. that that determines, mm -hmm. you know. Even though maybe guests come around towards the evening and you're not there to sort them out yeah. and all that. Yeah. But it's not different from being in the medical field, yeah. a nurse working shifts or being in a field where you have to work late anyway. So, yeah. I think our industry is what I call a lifestyle. Yeah, and it's a lifestyle. Pretty because, much, because yeah. you, you never take off being a broadcaster. No. you never take. I mean, you, you take you it never, to yeah. the environment called the office, and you yeah. take it back home. You yeah. take it to wherever you are. You take you it are. to the market. Yeah. people always yeah. think your hair has to be in place, mm -hmm. and you always have to yeah. look the way you look. Especially when for you guys yeah. on TV. Exactly, yeah. and so perhaps they see you on the day where you're a bit dressed down, and then obviously it then becomes a social media issue. Oh, so, uh, what, you know what's your hair. happening? Exactly. <laughs> So you, exactly. So you then have to find that partner who is able to balance you out. Mm. You know, when you're begin, beginning to care too much mm. about uh, what people are going to say. Yeah. You know, I think to survive in the industry as a married person, you really need to have a very stable partner. Mm. Really, really. You know, um, a whole lot of people come job hunting and all of that. And one of the questions I ask is if they're married or if they're in some relationship because yeah. they need to know what this industry or what this lifestyle is all about yeah. and their partners need to know so that to help them make that decision otherwise one will suffer the relationship will suffer all the job would suffer. I think people people get into situationships. That's what I call there we them. Go. There we go. <laughs> it's not quite a relationship. <laughs> it's not quite a relationship. We're hoping that this leads to somewhere. <laughs> and then you then yeah. tack on the fact that you're you know, you're a public figure, do you mm -hmm. understand? Yeah. But you're not um, celebrity, celebrity in quotes. So you're not um, maybe somebody who's um, out there, out there. Yeah. But you're in everybody's home. Yeah. Well, whereas you're not walking into their houses, you're in everybody's home. So you go to the mall and somebody will go, ooh, can I take a picture? Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. And yeah. then you're with the kind of man that's like, excuse me, could you exactly. move back? And all that. So you have to. It takes time. It's balance. It, yeah, yeah, it's time, balance. balance. And then you, maturity. who is the celeb in quotes, mm. um, have to always be gauging your man's face. I always say to people that when he doesn't like it, you will know. Mm. You should be able to tell that, okay, I think I should stop now mm. or something like yeah. that. And then, yeah. Tell me about growing up. Um, you seem to be a daddy's girl. Ah, oh, where did you get that impression? I don't know, but you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, family of five. Um, last one mm. um, no wonder <laughs> <laughs> yes pretty much so pretty much my father's daughter mm. but then it, it does help because um when you're close to your dad um and you feel lucky and blessed enough to have a good dad mm. it helps you mm. um in your marriage moving forward so mm. you'd you would know you'd respect your father right so you'd respect your spouse mm -hmm. um you would know there are certain boundaries no matter how angry you are there are things you won't say to your dad mm. and vice versa so yeah, I, I don't apologize for it, and anybody who doesn't feel happy about that, well, hey, life yeah. just grew up on your own. So. Amazing you're saying this because uh, one of the episodes of this show was um, was called Without My Father, mm. you know, and I had a bunch of people who came to share their stories of um, their fathers either not there mm. or... Um, they are physically, but not there emotionally. Emotionally, which is why I said positive role yeah. models. It mm. may not be a father, in, mm. in, a, in in that sense of the word, mm. but just somebody in your life that you could say, "This is how I'm feeling at this point." For some people, it's it's their mom, yeah. who's the dad and the mom at the same time. You do you, what, what can you do? Do you think that that would have a child, a mom playing a dad and a mom? I think um, for some people that's what they have and you know you, yes, you, 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 you make the most of what you have. Mm. Um, it is nice when you have it both ways because I mean that's the way I've known. So, um, but I've seen all different sorts of combinations. I wouldn't say if a father is not in the person's life they can't turn out yeah, right because no. God always has a way of balancing it mm -hmm. out for you even if it is a friendly There's always someone who comes along. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but the, the, for our like industry that. you better have that mentor that you can speak to to say I want this what do you think I sounded like that what do you think because you, you, you it's not an industry you can do on autopilot mm -hmm. you always have to have somebody who you can um, post-mortem with and yeah. somebody who you respect enough to say 
this is how I think I've performed. What do you think? Mm. You know, because I think the, the generation coming up, we kind of just play by ear and hope that social media will tell us we're doing it right. You know? Social media. Exactly. That's, <laughs> but that's a might not be. One, yeah. It is. Well, a double edged sword. It's good, but it's how, how yeah. we play with it. Yeah, true. Now, let's go back to relationships. You talked relationships earlier on, and um, talking marriages and all of that. Hmm. It's this <laughs> thing that is called irreconcilable differences. Now, <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, while some people don't believe it, yeah. you know, others are like, there's nothing like irreconcilable. I mean, as long as you guys are grown, grown adults, yeah. you should be able to reconcile your differences. And others, it's like, look, it's irreconcilable. And for others, the reason why they have irreconcilable differences is because they got into it with wrong reasons in the first place. You know, OJ, what you take? I have seen all manner of conclusions. There are people who, you, like you said, got into it for the wrong reasons. Some are in it for the right reasons and the differences came along yeah. when they got there. But, you know, I'd, I'd like to tell people that the only people in that marriage are the people in the marriage. Mm. Everybody else is outside. Mm. So, um, some of the things we think we will not do or we hope people will not see us do. Yeah. It's what you do behind closed doors when you and your spouse are one on one that will determine where that marriage is going. And I mm. keep telling people that even if you've said to 10 people, I'm never going to go back, blah, blah, blah. And both of you sit down in the same room and decide this is what we want. You're good to go. It doesn't mm. matter what anybody is thinking. Mm. Mm. And that's, that's actually, I think, is the key to getting it right. Remembering that the only two people who should matter is yourself what comes to me yeah. sorry to cut in what comes to mind for me now is um les brown he he quoted someone i can't remember who he quoted he said if there's no enemy within yeah then the enemy without can do us no harm well yeah there, i mean there, there are many african problems my mom's always saying that it is only when there's a hole in the wall that the lizards sleep through <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean people who what can she do you know what i mean if you allow it yeah it will happen there's nothing, there's nothing special about you. It, it can happen. Yes. You yeah. could have that problem in mm. your own marriage as well. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like I, I'd say to other people, when they go, oh, um, how do you keep marriage together? What are you supposed to do? What's the secret? The secret is daily getting up and committing. Mm. Every day. Every day you have to decide, I am committed to my marriage. It's, it's that, it's that, it's that um, what's the word, tangible? You know, just like how you get up and decide I'm going to have a shower. You get up and decide I'm going to stay true to my spouse. I like the word you use, decide. Commit yeah, it, it is a decision. Yeah. Because obviously it's not you, just you, happening. It's not. The it's world not is full of people. You know. There will always be somebody richer than your spouse, more handsome yeah. than your spouse, or more pretty than your wife. There will always be somebody who um, you think, oh, perhaps, oh, maybe. But you've committed, you've committed, and mm -hmm. that's just what it is. Mm. So you have to. Um, yeah, it's like when you glue something together. For better, for worse. For better, for better. <laughs> well, yes, for better, for worse. <laughs> but you know, that some people have said that that's actually <laughs> that's actually wishing yourself bad luck. You know, when you say for better, for worse, that's like you're hoping the worst to come. So just yeah. hope for better, for better. My brother, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's a men's room, and I have um, Ichoma on Yato in the house, and we're just talking on a whole lot of things. Okay, relationship, trust, marriages, um, profession, and you know, just things that are relevant to us today. And um, we're going to the meat of the matter shortly because <laughs> this chat actually came as a result of a another what? chat. WhatsApp message that um, we shared and she was reeling out stuff and I'm like, hey, look, just bring it to the radio, you know, bring it to the men's room. And here she is. We're getting there shortly, but, you know, just doing some prelims on, you know, her view on, on her life, her family and all of that. I'm sorry, you cannot call now, but you can be a part of it on social media um, at Men's Room OJ. Just check it out and uh, chip in whatever you want to chip in. It's all good. I call this the listening in version. You know, um, sorry, you can't call now. So, what can I say? Sorry. Yeah. So, still on relationships, you know, um, we gather that a couple of issues that come up in um, to indicate whether or not uh, a, a healthy relationship is heading towards the rocks. You know, um, one of them is this case of 
checking his phone or checking her phone all the time. Mm -hmm. mm. Do I sense trust somewhere? <laughs> you know something? I don't know. Many, many people say, oh, you should check, you know. Some say don't check because, you know, you trust so you don't check. But mm. people say, well, if you trust, they then say, you can check. They say whatever it is you're looking for, you will find you it. You will find it, yeah. exactly. You can take things, messages out of context. Mm -hmm. I'd say, what did you start out doing? If you started out, obviously you're not marrying somebody who you met for two seconds. So mm. you, you did it, yeah. hopefully, and all. So what did you start? Did you start out by checking his phone? So when you then get married, either you begin to change what you used to do before. You never checked his phone. All of a sudden, you are checking. Mm. So then the trust check now. In, you know, the, he now goes, "Why are you checking my phone?" You know what I mean. Mm. So, I'd say if you check, you will definitely find stuff that you are not looking for, or you don't want to <laughs> look, or you don't want to find. I'm not saying um, people who check each other's phones. I'd say just be at peace with yourself. Mm. Be at peace with yourself, and you could be paranoid by checking. Yeah. Oh, well, what, what did I mean? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. you know what I mean. So. Personally, I'd say give yourself peace. Give, give yourself, yourself some a break. peace. Give yourself a break. Life is too short. <laughs> Enjoy the moments that you have um, mm. together, and um, just don't complicate your life. You know. For worse, for better, for worse. There's another angle here that says you think of worst case scenarios. Mm. You know, when you know when you think your good relationship is going to hit the rocks, you're you're always like. Similar to checking the phones mm. and seeing things that, mm. you know, can be taken out of context. Mm. And there you are thinking of worst case scenarios, you know, um, she's not home early or he's not home early and your mind is on overdrive on, okay, he could be with her, she could be with him. Well, you know, people who even get home early, their minds could be elsewhere as well. Mm. Who knows where the mind of the human being is? That's why I keep saying that the state of the relationship you're in, you know, um, determines so many things for you. Oh. You could be in the same room. And WhatsApping somebody else. Yeah. You could sure. come home from work at the same time and just not be that into each other as you used to be. So, I don't think that, I mean people go oh if you are far away from your from each other distance and stuff like that anything can happen anything can happen under your nose even, right under your nose even without the distance exactly anything. even without the distance. So, yeah. I'd say um, you're the best check in your relationship. Um, not your neighbor mm -hmm. or your colleague who's thinking, ah, my husband is doing this, why isn't yours doing that? You know uh, um, when things are beginning not to <laughs> be as they should be. Yeah. And you take the right steps to, to write It's it. a conscious effort. It's an everyday... It's beyond the conscious effort. I think it's 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 it so tangible. Lifestyle. Yeah. It's so... <laughs> there's no manual for marriage. <laughs> That's a problem, you see. You know, everybody's marriage is different. Yeah. You know, I keep because saying that. Because we are all different. Because we're all different, yeah. exactly. So what works for A might not work for you. Yeah. And when somebody says 10 steps to a good marriage, I'm thinking, well, those are the 10 steps that work for you. Perhaps that's not the way my own man is wired. So mm -hmm. I think um, understanding the way your spouse is wired is just so key. You know, some people love languages or I want flowers yeah. Other people, like, the flowers are going to die give me something that I can, <laughs> I can hold you know that kind of thing yeah. so yeah you know um, some guy calls the other day and says uh, no we, we had this again one of the episodes of the show we had where we talked about money you know and I realized that it really just like you said it it's a formula that works for you yeah. while some believe in joint account <laughs> let me tell you i was with <laughs> i was with i was with a bunch of <laughs> a bunch of ladies yeah. um you know how it is you have people who mentor you <laughs> why are you laughing Hold well, on. I'm, 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 I'm laughing at this. <laughs> so these ladies are in their 50s and in their 60s um somewhere in their 30s and it was interesting to see the dynamics of the conversation yeah. so um somebody got you know how you get an alert <laughs> and all that and she said oh um my, ah, this is, shouldn't be my balance and everything. Like, oh, maybe the husband had drawn some money. Eh? You mean <laughs> you will have a, the same account? And I noticed that the older ladies were like, no, no, never, yeah. ever, 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 ever. Mm -hmm. You know? And the younger ones were like, oh, but it's sweet, it's romantic. I mean, we, we, we share everything. Uh? And those who were in the middle were, well, yeah, we have a joint account, <laughs> but I have my own somewhere, you know, so which he doesn't know kind about. like the insurance policy. Again, <laughs> again, it boils down to you and your spouse. Yeah. If you know he's a drinking type, that look, <laughs> the, as the money is hitting, is out. You're not going to be saying, ah, I have to follow society and have a joint account. 
you know what works best for you. Exactly. If he's not good with money, there's no point pretending and mm. you know mm. and all that. Or you know, if, if he is, then why not? Yeah. You know, but like mm. I, I'd say, there is no formula. There's no formula. It's actually what yeah. works. It um, works. What works for you? For some, it's the joint account, and for others, it's like okay, let's have a pool somewhere there. Exactly. You have yours. I'll have mine. Yeah. Um, but interesting you know. to note, since we're in the men's room, interesting mm -hmm. to note Please. that. Um, the older ladies in this case felt that each time the husband took a big chunk, mm. they couldn't ask him, what did you want to use the money for? And they, wouldn't, they weren't allowed, he'd be upset. What do you mean? You know, why are you asking? But when they would draw a big chunk, it's like, yes. what do you want to use that kind of money for? Yeah. So, you see what I mean? Somehow, I, I think, well, I've spoken with a whole, with a couple of um, men my age, and the, re the reverse is the case, really? you know. They take and the lady's like, mm -hmm. what happened? What'd you take them? And she takes, it's like, all right, you want more? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Where are such people? No, I'm telling you. Okay. You know, okay. I don't know, dynamics. Right. What works for you? <laughs> okay. <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. It's all good. Uh, let's see. Let's, let's look at one more, then we'll go into, you know, what we talked about earlier on. Okay. Um, hmm. <laughs> your leash is tight. Yeah, your leash is tight. Uh, what does that mean? Your leash is tight, as in, you know, following you everywhere you go. Oh. And where were you? Oh. I'm trying to call you. That's a recipe for high blood pressure. Mm. Yeah, you find that um, again, the trust issue. But then mm -hmm. some people are just controlling. Mm. You know, for them, they're afraid of losing that which they think they have. And for the other person, it's like, ah, you're choking me. Exactly. I mean, I could, the, the person could lie and say, oh, I'm here, I'm here, they're elsewhere. Mm. You should be able to let the person go yeah. and say, all right, I trust, I trust that you. wherever you are, you know, um, you have the, the health of our relationship at heart. Yeah. You know, you know that we, because I'm, I say to people, relationships are like human beings. Mm. They can fall sick. They need attention, they need mm -hmm. care, they need cleaning, they need all these things that uh, the, the normal human being's body would need to function right. So you find that you, you, you leave the relationship to be wilted and dry and, and you're wondering why is, things are not fresh. Yes. I want it yeah. to be fresh. It can be fresh all the time. <laughs> I mean, it's That's like, another thing. You know, there are stages. There are stages. Yeah. There are stages. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it's yeah. the ability to be able to adjust to each stage. You know, yeah. let it run out and move on to the other. Well, the problem is when you're in a s one particular stage and you're looking at somebody else who's either ahead of you or um, you know has left the stage you are in yeah. and you're thinking, why can't we be what they are? I would always say, you don't know what transpires when the curtains are drawn. Yeah. And it is only those two people in the relationship. And I think that there are a lot of distractions and outsiders always trying to put their hands in. Especially with the social media. Oh. Well, social media can be good. It can be. It's like a double-edged sword, right? Um, it, it can it can hurt. It can harm. It can also help. It can hinder. All the H words. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the thing about it is, um, there's nothing like a, a human connection. Yeah. Social media is virtual, so you have a thousand friends on Facebook. A thousand likes. Exactly. But a thousand likes, but nobody really likes you. Yeah. You know. Mm. So that's um, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. And you then also the pressure of trying to show that your relationship is healthy is another mm. thing I find very disturbing mm. for social media. You find, oh, my husband took me here. Oh, my boyfriend took me there. And did you even have fun when you were there? Because half the time you're snapping, taking pictures of the food, <laughs> trying to <laughs> selfie the waiter. And I'm thinking you're supposed to be experiencing something. Our experiences are, are dying. Well, you understand? The, the, the food and the waiter. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so you're thinking, hey, here's where we went for dinner. And mm. the man is trying to keep up with um, where he's seen some yeah. of the ladies take Keep up with know? pressure. Keep yeah. Up with, um, no. yeah, keep up with pressure. Yeah. So a group of Nigerian husbands gathered <laughs> at a conference on how to live a loving relationship with your wife. Did they all safely get there? <laughs> Go back <laughs> after. Somehow they did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know? Was this before or after getting <laughs> football? Okay, sorry. <laughs> Carry on. All right, let me finish my story. Now, the men were asked, how many of you love your wife? Yeah, trick question. Oh, is that a true question? Come on. All the men raised their hands. Here, here, here. 
And then they were asked, when was the last time you told your wife you love her? Oh. Now, some, <laughs> now some men answered, well, today, some yesterday, majority didn't remember. Ah, yeah. That's critical. Yeah, critical, right? Then, um, the men were told to take their cell phones and send the following text messages or text message to their respective wives. This is the text message. I love you, sweetheart. <laughs> Who is this? <laughs> you're listening. Look, you, you're listening to me now. You can do it, actually. If, if you're at work or you're... Okay, if you're driving, just park. You know, and, and do it. Do it now. And wait for the response. It depends, actually. Um, so, that's the message. I love you, sweetheart. And then the men were asked to exchange their phone. Oh, so each of them <laughs> can read... <laughs> so each of them can read the other's wives response to the love message and um, what we'll do is to read out some not all some of the replies from 15 of them there were more than 15 okay there were all 15 but some of the replies some of the replies and here we go reply one was have you impregnated somebody? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. and we're gonna go through that with IG hmm? have you impregnated someone again the second one was, um, that was then, not now. <laughs> the other one was, you want borrow money, Abi? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, but it's serious. Then the other one, um, reply four was, what did you do again? I won't forgive you this time. Number five says, meaning. <laughs> Number six says, is that a new song? <laughs> Number seven says, am I dreaming? Number eight says, if you don't tell me who this message is actually for, you will die today. <laughs> That's a classic. I'll That's tell it. you. <laughs> Number nine says, you this man, I asked you to stop drinking. Oh my God. <laughs> Number 10 says, I beg now who be this? <laughs> Number 11, when did this one start? Mm. Number 12 says, please, you send this SMS to the wrong number. <laughs> Number 13 says, who gave monkey banana? <laughs> number 14 says, who taught you this? Exactly. <laughs> and finally, number 15 says, please, I'm not in the mood. Oh, <laughs> classic. <laughs> <laughs> now, these are funny. Oh. I mean, we can laugh, but oh. this is true. Oh, I know. This well, I true. don't know. OJ, is it an African thing? I mean... Uh, they tend to, you know how you, how you hear it from the older men and all. They go, we show it. We don't have to say, yes. I we do you before yeah. you go. Uh -huh. mm. So we, we show it. So we don't have to keep on, you know, saying it. But women, <laughs> women <laughs> want they we want to hear these things. And I remember when you read that out to me, and I was laughing over it. <laughs> and, I, and I said, well, sometimes women condition themselves mm. out of the zone where they expect you to say it because they feel you're never going to. So they get to the point where they feel whatever, you know. Well, that's bad. Uh, as long as the bills are paid, there's um, fuel in my car, mm. children are going to school. Mm. There's uh, food in the house. Food in the house. Taking care of us. So. You're not womanizing. Mm. Fine. Um, I can deal with that. I can I can cope without hearing it. But then you you don't re they don't realize that they kind of sear themselves off. That's right. That's and the then the day the man says like, ah, ah. <laughs> are you drunk? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and depending on <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. I mean the classic bear oh, that one was meaning. <laughs> said, meaning what? You know, it shows you how far yes. um, the person has actually gone emotionally um, it shows you how distant the person can become. And sometimes it's dangerous because the men don't even realise the woman has zoned out mm. since. I think not an excuse, but I think sometimes we get busy um, busy with life. Mm. busy running things mm. in the office because I mean by nature we're wired to work we're wired to solve problems mm. wired to to be hands-on mm. and so we get lost in the maze of work the office I'm back home I'm tired yeah. hey, I've given you guys money now what else what exactly. else you what do you want me to do exactly. now I've given you this I provided oh, this like the classic or, you know. one you have is what do you mean I don't love you if I didn't love you would I pay this exactly. and I'm thinking exactly. it's, it's so off because that's not the language that women want to hear you know so I'd say remember those first time we used to talk about scheduling things mm. 
in summer Canada, so have I said I love you today? Mm. Hmm. Have I said I love you this week, this month, this year? You know, so you never let it pass and just let things go like that. And it's really amazing how it works for you, ladies. Yeah. And those words. We're moved by the things we hear, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> men are moved by other stuff, but hey, you know, <laughs> by the things that... What do you think he, men are moved by? I don't know, you tell me. No, you <laughs> tell me. I mean, <laughs> just saying that, you know, um, you're moved by by words of <laughs> words of affection, words of affirmation. You want to hear it, no matter how many times it's been said. Mm. You want to, because when a relationship is new and it's fresh, you say it all the time. All of a sudden, I thought they were bono soup and the wear and, and, and wear and tear. It's not like, but you know now, you know <laughs> this is something you know. You know, I'm thinking, yeah, but 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 you asked if it was an African thing or a Nigerian thing. <laughs> it, why? why? <laughs> because um. I have a friend who is into flowers and she's like, oh, he sent me flowers. And he said, flower, bitch. Okay, <laughs> no problem. And he said, flowers, 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 no cash. And after some time, he's like, okay, you could actually stick a check in the, in the, in the bouquet. <laughs> yes, I like flowers. But. And I said, you know what, you can't have it. You can't eat your cake. <laughs> but I'd say to there are many, many relationships out there that, 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 that get broken. Because the woman is hearing from somebody else huh. what she yeah. should hear from her husband. And they t uh, men who typically gauge it and feel you're starved of affection, that's how they enter. So they come in and they struggle how pretty you are. Perhaps Mogaz never even said that for the last five years. You've changed her style, you've tried everything. You don't even care whether he says it or not anyway. You're moving on your life. And then this man comes and he's like, they, uh, comment he's after lyrical. comment after yeah. ah before mm. you know it you've waxed out bomb, bomb <laughs> you know and everything and so you're thinking oh all this attention for me and before you know what's going on even if the person is not financially as strong as your husband mm. is there's something exactly. that you feel you're getting that, yeah. that um, your husband is not giving you and i'd always say make it tough for your wife to cheat i mean you should make it very very difficult for her to say you know what I'm going all the way, let me follow this person, mm. you know. It's not an easy one, but you have to, you have to, and that goes for women as well. You okay. have to make sure that you do everything within your power and outside. Okay. Uh, spiritually, you know, God, <laughs> and the church will get the wrong idea, you know, to keep your spouse with you. <laughs> yes, so I have crazy ideas. No, no, no. Everything within your power everything to needed. ensure that everything your spouse nice. is yeah. happy 100 percent um, um, two questions oh what's the first one okay tough for your um to make it tough for your spouse to cheat yeah how do you do that before you answer that um you see scripting this show is always very important <laughs> This is not script now, this are uh, what they call them now, bullet points. That's how I work. That's what right. people call BP production, bullet point production. All right, so um, making it tough for your man to cheat or making it tough for your spouse to cheat, mm. how? Someone is asking how right yeah. now. How do you make it tough for your spouse to cheat? Yeah. What are those things that, um, let's just play a game. If you weren't married, for instance, and you, your relationship was very fresh. What are those things that um, would make you feel, oh wow, this person is special? Yeah. So you have words of affirmation, various love languages. What does she like? Um, what can I do to, you know, put that big smile on his face? Mm. And you never mm. stop doing those things. Mm. You know, a lot. Like, most of the surveys that you see, you find that oh, when we got married, the person changed. Yeah. She used, he used to take me out. He doesn't take me out anymore. Mm. We used to go here. We don't go there anymore. Mm. He used to be so funny. He used to be so fun. So I'd say it used to be. Used to be all those things that made the marriage what it is. That made the dating what it was. Mm. You know, mm. when you, people keep looking. Oh, when we were dating, those were our best days. What were the things you were doing? And you're supposed to have better days ahead of you. Yeah, supposed to, exactly. Your best days are supposed to be ahead of you. So I mean, if some man comes in and he wants to give you five, ten flowers, your husband gives you flowers. So what's the big deal? Yeah. Or he wants to pay money to your account. You're not hungry. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. He, somebody can only come in when there's a gap 
and so you have to make sure so you feel that you are duty bound. Are duty bound. It's, it's, Men, it's tough, but women, do yeah, it, it tough. is tough. Do but it tough. And you know within you when you're falling short mm. of what you should do. You know, I mean, a month should not go by. Ah, uh ah, -uh, no activity. <laughs> what what kind of activity, if I may ask? Hmm. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> you are, yeah, just curious. I mean. Just saying. I mean, in a month, no, no surprise cards. Mm. No notes anywhere in the house. No, okay, let me even take him out. Okay, he doesn't want to take you out. You take him somewhere. Ah, ah, yeah. you, you know? Mm. And then there's nothing wrong with you taking your spouse somewhere. Mm -hmm. I didn't say, go and spend your salary on boyfriend. <laughs> no. Ah, at the end of the day. I mean, the simplest things, you know, just being able to share, yeah. share a drink or something. It doesn't have yeah. to be... It doesn't um, have to be a bank-breaking thing. Something yeah. major. Yeah. It could be um, you were coming it's back home. Thought and you got him, even if it's, whether he's not, not an ice cream person, but just to, to show your spouse that you're actually thinking there we go. about them. Mm. It doesn't have to be something you spent money on, something physical. It could be, any, it could be anything. But you know, the, you, the familiarity they say breeds contempt. When you yeah. become too familiar with your spouse, mm. though you should be familiar with each other, but when you take your spouse for granted, yeah, exactly. your, your spouse will surprise you. Never yeah. think it can happen to me. Mm. It can. It will. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> just say I mean I'm just quiet so it sinks and you did it, you captured it quite well when you said <laughs> I'm telling you truly because we're not immune to these things. Yeah. It's not yeah. um it's not um, it happened to them in the movies or it happened to them far away. Yeah. It's it's yeah. right here. I it think the worst happen. thing that can actually happen is when you don't even know that your spouse has disconnected from you and you think everything is fine. Mm. That's the worst thing that happened to anybody because you don't see it even coming. Mm. Why didn't you see it coming? You know, um, particularly for men, I'd like to say that for women, when she's not happy with this, it will be easier to detect. Mm -hmm. You know, because you're yeah. thinking, okay, I mean, you would, you could play. You well, What's when the matter? Nothing. Stops complaining. Nothing if you used to complain about something and it stops complaining, hmm. red flag. <laughs> Very red flag. As in, you know what? I'm dead to this now. <laughs> exactly. so. Which is not the best. <laughs> Let me back you up to um, what you talked about filling the gap. You know, the gap is there, and somebody comes and is just, you know, um, dropping the lyrics for the person and all of that. And regardless of whether or not the person is wealthy or has. Don't you see that as a wicked. Because you'll be pouring the lyrics, mm -hmm. and then it now stops down the road. Do you understand what I mean? Well. When the person is trying to get something, huh. it doesn't matter. The means doesn't matter, isn't it? If it's working, why not continue? You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Why do Why do you hear women sleep with their drivers? Why do you hear, you know, uh, the, the driver can't offer them anything, except that thing which um, the man has taken for granted? You know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So I'd say that um, the way you would shower praise on someone you just met, you have to continue to do that for your spouse. It's tough, especially when every day you see each other and yeah. one quarrel or the other mm. or something has happened. But there is that's why you marry who you love, not somebody who you are enduring. Yeah. You know, or somebody your who friend you know. as a matter of fact. Yeah, but then who is your friend? You keep hearing oh marry your friend. Who marries I mean, the enemy? You know, oh, we yeah. all marry our friends. <laughs> People <laughs> marry their enemies. Okay, true. Ooh, true, true. I'm okay, telling true. you for true. business reasons and all kinds of reasons. Okay, true. <laughs> yeah. But marry somebody who you um who you genuinely care about mm. uh, tend to hurt. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the hurts come, but um, yeah. the same love takes care of the hurt. Yeah, exactly. Know, soothing balm, so to speak. Great time, yeah. Ichoma Onyato has been my guest in the men's room. First time ever, and I'm hoping she'll come here with Mr. Onyato sometime soon. Yay. You know, so we hear from him, actually. You know, how, how he's been, you know, the... Um, are you see now? Don't say coping. <laughs> That's actually good or bad. <laughs> say, how do you cope with your wife? I say, hmm, is that a trick question? <laughs> you know, I have a colleague here who says um, her friends or her husband's friends, one of her husband's friends, you know, told him, you know, that, uh, or asks how he copes with her, you know, as in, oh come on, clip her wings for God's sakes, uh -uh. you know, and... Come on. Clip her wings. You I see, don't know. that's I don't that's know. what family is. That's why people are not happy. You know, they go, "What do you mean, clip my wings? Like, mm. Am I am I a bird? Uh, you know that kind of thing." Before you become one. <laughs>
But you know what? The most important takeaway is the yeah. only two people in that relationship are the two people in that relationship. Mm. I can't, I can't stress that mm. more. All right. So, did you send your text? Did you get the response? You got it. What was it? Did it go with any of the ones we have here? I could reel them out again, but for time, you know, fifteen. <laughs> Honestly, they are funny, but they are so real. There's this other one. If you call my number again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, these are classic lines, you know, that come from women who have been starved of simple affection. And that's the message today. You know, like I did say, it's just a conversation with Ijama, you know, for you to pick something from there for you as a man, to pick for your wife and, you know, for the lady as well. Um, it's a whole lot of things to pick. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. You're Looking welcome. forward to having you again. Now, um, follow us on Twitter at Men's Room OJ. Uh, Facebook is Men's Room OJ. Uh, we're going to have it up and running on YouTube, so just be on the lookout and um, we'll have it up and running there. You missed it, you'll catch up there. And we'll have the um, stop and running so you catch up if you missed up if you missed out on this. Once again, thank you so much. I'm Onimisi Adaba. I'll be back at you again mm. with the, um, the Men's Room. Same topic, different person. Or maybe I'll have Ijama come in with her husband. You never can tell. Good night and God bless you real good. Good night. Alright. All right. Nice. Nice and sweet. Please click on the red subscribe button below this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel.